Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show. And before we start today's episode, I thought I'd share with you a poll I posted. Uh, it's been 17 hours since I posted it. And we've had most of the results have come in. Of course, you know, there is several thousand members that haven't voted, but it's just a bit of fun. And what I asked was, today's poll, your favorite iconic watch of all time, does not matter where, which, if you own it or not, one vote per person. And I left nominations open so people could nominate, and there was a hell of a lot of watches nominated. Everything from the Seiko 5, the Cartier tank there, the Casio made it in there, Patek Calatrava, Panerai, the Tag uh, Hoya Monaco, everything you can possibly imagine that's an iconic watch. Well, so far, with what is it, 231 votes so far, the Oyster. The Oyster, sorry, the Omega Speedmaster took the lead. I really thought it was going to be the Submariner, uh, trailing behind with 155 volts. I mean, it's still early days. Omega Seamaster, this is the 300 coming at, coming in at three with 55 volts. Navi Timer in fourth. AP Royal Oak fifth. JLC Reverso only with 13 vo volts at sixth place. Rolex State just bang bang. Blah blah and the rest and and there we go the rest. It's interesting to see that the Speedmaster has just so much much I mean I voted for it too. There's a clear majority here. I mean 230 votes, the runner up is 155. So, you know, almost a hundred votes. Almost a hundred votes on its on number two. So quite a clear lead there. Uh, interestingly enough, uh Grobnob's no <laughs> nomination was the Ingersoll Mickey Mouse, which actually is pretty pretty famous in its own rights, you know, with the Mickey Mouse hands moving separately. Anyway, quite an interesting poll. I'll, I'll follow this up in a couple of days, see if uh, anything changes. Uh, but yeah, very cool indeed. Anyway, guys, enough of that Facebook malarkey. Let's roll the intro now and get into today's show. and welcome to today's show. Today I'm going to be doing a collection review, a viewer collection review and I do realize I'm very behind in these so if you have sent in your collection to be reviewed and made a donation to charity please just send me an email uh, to remind me and uh, I'll, I'll move them up the priority list. As you guys know I'm about 10 watch reviews behind but we're gonna catch up very very soon hopefully i really should do a wristwatch check before I'm, i do the review and of course i'm wearing the skx i just had to get it back in rotation and i'm doing the um i'm doing the the, the robert redford from all his last actually i think his was a darker a nato strap but uh, yes on a nato strap lovely soft beautiful nato strap from uh, wrist candy watch club so yeah i'm doing the robert redford uh, I, I've really missed the SKX, but it's always nice to put it back into rotation. Wristwatch check done. Let's dive into this collection review. Now, this is from Steel Harden, and actually it's a, it's a kind of two-piece collection. He's got his own collection, and then his wife's got a really beautiful uh, little kind of sub-collection. Well, I don't know why I shouldn't say little. It's absolutely gorgeous. But anyway, let's get into this. So, he says, Hi, TGB. Here is our watch journey. My wife, Angeli, and I met in college and married at 22 and 23. Our rings were small and it took everything we had just to buy them, laugh out loud. We lived in a studio in downtown Seattle for about seven years. We graduated college and got jobs. As our jobs got better, we decided to buy a house and have a little one. Uh, on our 11th anniversary, I realized it was time for, to upgrade her ring. We went to the local jewelry store to find a ring which piqued our interest. And I decided to get her a Rolex, along with upgrading the ring. Very, very nice. So, I got her a Rolex Oyster Perpetual Blue Dial, and I'll share it up this side of the screen as I talk. When she got it, she was very surprised, and after the initial shock, she decided to give me the Rolex Datejust 2. So, so they've got kind of matching watches, which is, uh, well, not the exact matching, but his and hers, very, very tastefully done. Absolute classics, you can't go wrong with that. 
So, by this time we started getting the watch itch, right? We started doing research, watching videos, YouTube aficionados like yourself, thank you very much. I'm just a, a watch fan, I'm learning every day, uh, but I'm very flattered by the compliment. And we were in awe of the art of automatic watch making. I think, I think we, all, we all are, we all are. Uh, when we look back at the watch and we can see it moving like a little living being, yeah, exactly. It is truly a wonderful journey and it's so full of fun to see the watches speak to us. This will be our third year as collectors. We get one just about every year for an anniversary gift. Oh, what a fantastic, I really like that idea. So in his collection, he has the Vachon Constantine 18 karat white gold, and this is the reference number 472000000G9019, which is a beautiful little 36 millimeter, absolutely gorgeous. A little power reserve there, let's, ha let's have a closer look. Yeah, the date is, in a subdial, very very nicely done, very classic looking with some Roman numerals there, beautiful patent dial there, white face, absolutely gorgeous, very very classy, you know, like 36 millimeter size, very classy indeed, it, it looks a little bit like a Lange actually, but, and I love, he hasn't included a, a, this picture, but if you look this watch up, the, the buckle and the strap is is made out of the, the Vacheron Constantine logo is a bit like the um, Maltese, it's a bit like a Maltese cross and it's incorporated into the buckle, absolutely gorgeous, very very nice and thin and elegant and he's included a picture of the display back as well so you can see all the, that lovely decorated movement, uh, very very nice indeed, very nice, classy piece, I mean Vacheron Constantine, what a history, I mean this, really really rich heritage brand right there anyway so moving on what else has he got the Rolex Datejust 2 with the white gold bezel the 41 millimeter size uh, to match his wife's Romans again so he's gone for a very kind of dressy look with a beautiful sunburst blue dial there absolutely gorgeous it's quite interesting to see it next to the the 36 millimeter Vachon Constantine personally I, I prefer the 36 millimeter Datejust but um, yeah, I mean it's 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 modern times now, and it's gone up to forty-one. Lovely fluted bezel, very very classy, very classy indeed. What you know? What a powerful collection already. And then his third piece, Omega Speedmaster Professional, Man on the Moon, forty-two millimeters, absolutely gorgeous. So, you know, we all know about the Man on the Moon. We 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 really don't have to go on too much about it. Let's see what he says. Our collecting has some new Omega members, I'm sure you're happy to see. My question to you is what do you think of my collection so far, what do you think my next edition should be? Uh, I was thinking of a JLC Master Calendar Stainless Steel, very very nice. A JLC Master Compressor, yes, 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 I could see that. Also what are your thoughts on the new Tudor Heritage Black Bay uh, with the fully in-house movement? And last of all he says he's included a donation to the Royal British Legion, so absolutely fantastic, thank you so much. You know, that's my only, uh, that's all I ask for collection reviews is uh, your donation to charity, so whenever you send a, a viewer collection in, just make sure you've included the uh, receipt you get. And you don't have to donate to Royal British Legion, you can donate to whoever you wish, uh, your charity of your choice. Uh, but uh, that's all I ask in return for this video. So thank you very, very much, Steele, for your generous, very generous donation to the Royal British Legion. Now, let's just have a look at uh, his wife's collection, then we'll come back and we'll look at, you know, what I think he should get and all the rest of it. So, his wife has a matching, well, not a matching, but the, the, the female, uh, the ladies' equivalent, Amiga Speedmaster Ladies Chronograph 38mm and the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Air King No Holes 34mm. A really nice, I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't mind wearing either of them, you know, they're, they're, they're perfectly fine. I mean, yes, the, uh, the Speedmaster is a little bit more feminine with those... Um, it's, it's funny how it becomes feminine with the addition of those numerals, but yeah, I, I, I could get away with wearing that absolutely fine. Um, it's a shame that they, you know, they say it's ladies, it's 38 millimeters. You look at the reduced, it's it's uh, it's the same size, and that's unisex. I don't know why they call this ladies, but um, 
yeah, it's it's very very nice, absolutely gorgeous, and that thirty four millimeter little Air King, absolute pure class. Probably that's the pick of the bunch for me. We discussed the Air King in the last live show. Uh, it's quite a you know Rolex are bringing it back in quite a way, in quite a fashion, justifiably so. It's got a really interesting history behind it as well. Anyway, so absolutely gorgeous, and then. This morning, Steele sent me an, uh, uh, an email saying, my wife just surprised me and ordered a Coke bezel GMT, two ma uh, a GMT Master 2 1991. Uh, he's included a little pic. This is just a, a stock photo, and this was from Bob's Watches. Uh, they have uh, certified tech Rolex technicians, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I know, I've, recommend them. I've recommended them many, many times. They're great. Uh, it's arriving Monday, so congrats. So he's already decided his, his next piece, so quite a surprise. I wonder who chose that, because your wife obviously has impeccable taste. You didn't seem to be mentioning the Rolex, you were, you were on about JLC. Now, let's, let's look at the collection as a whole. You've got some really nice high-end pieces. You're obviously all about quality. What do you wear as a beta watch, you know? Maybe you might want to consider one of these. Maybe you're not into your Seikos, fair enough. But I think actually a Tudor might be a really good beat to watch. You kind of mentioned that yourself. In terms of the new in-house, obviously, personally, I'd, I'd prefer if I had a choice to get the new in-house. It is more horologically interesting, and I do think that it's going to be... Um, look, there's nothing wrong with the previous models with the, with the, the uh, ETA. Absolutely nothing wrong with them. Uh, but if I had a choice, I would go with the in-house. You know, they're all going to be sought after eventually anyway. It's Tudor, you know. So I think actually you need a good diver in there. You've got all your watches are very kind of... I mean, I know that the, the, the Man on the Moon is a sports watch and la di and all the rest of it, but really you put it on a leather strap, it becomes very classy and it becomes very classy indeed. They're all watches that you could quite happily wear with suits, very formal. I mean, the Vachon Constantine, such a gorgeous, classy dress watch. And the Datejust too. And, and again, you know, it's a very versatile. You can wear it, dress it down with jeans and all the rest of it. But I think you need a di diver. You need a, a rough and tumble watch. The GMT at, that you're now getting adds a really nice dimension, a really nice kind of uh, sporty, very usable piece that is a bit more tougher than, than what you've got already. But I really think you should get a diver. If you want to just get an entry level piece, it's a good B to go with the SKX. If you want to go with a mid-range piece, you know, you've got the, the Oris Aquises, you've got the Glycine Combat Subs, this kind of thing, you know, uh, something you can just wear, bash about, and you don't have to worry about it too much. If you want to go a little bit better, then go with the Tudor Diver, you know, Tudor Heritage, I think, kind of, uh, um, you know, hit, hit the nail on the head with that. Uh, I think the JLC Master Compressor is, is almost going into another level of, you know, the Navy SEAL one, I forget which uh, version, but very tough and robust, obviously, but they're a lot of money, and do you really want to be wearing that as a beta watch? So I think you need just a, a good, affordable, entry-level Swiss diver in there of some kind. But I hand it over to my audience. What diver watch would complement this lot? Also, you don't have a quartz piece. I know you you talked about being in love with 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 the with automatics, but I really do think uh, a quartz piece is 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 good for any collection. You know because something to, a point of reference for accuracy and, and, and setting the time let's say you got a, a, a some kind of digital Casio G-Shock right something fun for the weekend right that you put on when you're I don't know, doing yard work or doing really kind of I intense activities right a lot of them come with world time functions and, and it's just so useful to have a point of reference to set all your watches by so you're not dependent on computers and and uh, technology, all the rest of it, you, your collection is independent of that. So I think that's that's something to, to consider. But I, I understand, judging by the look of your collection, which I've got to say is, is, you know, you have impeccable, impeccable taste. There's nothing garish there, it's all classics, they're all, 
you know, they're going to hold their value well, you're, you're, you're playing it safe, I mean, you've really learnt your stuff. There's nothing really negative to say about any of your watches. I mean, your wife has, has just as much good taste as, as you do. I would actually look at buying your wife a third piece to really kind of round it off. So maybe a little Cartier tank, that's what I'm considering for my wife. Something a little bit different. Well, she's got two very sporty pieces two robust sporty pieces so I think a little something a little formal a little uh, you know carty tank would be absolutely gorgeous maybe she doesn't like uh, square watches but you know that's what I would suggest but yeah a diver watch get a diver watch and you know you're you're already there I mean I if I had that collection I'd be extremely satisfied it's just I've got to say it's pure class it really is absolute pure class uh, and I'm just, I'm just honoured to have uh, such um, people with such impeccable taste, so generous with the, with the, the, the donation to charity. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, so yeah, that's my suggestion, guys. Please add your opinions, thoughts, queries, questions, all the rest of it down in the comments. Really like to hear what you think would complement this collection. Um, it's all been Swiss so far, so maybe something Japanese. You can get. Maybe a Grand Seiko, you know. I would definitely look at some, some entry-level Japanese divers, you know, maybe a, a Seiko Sumo, something a bit different, something other than, than Swiss. You know, that might be, bring a whole kind of extra dimension of fun and, and variety. I wish you all the best. You know, I've been married uh, just a little bit longer than you. What a beautiful idea. I, in fact, I, I pretty much do the same thing. I, I, I buy my wife. Uh, mostly jewellery, but um, she's starting to get into watches now, so I think for me, I'm, I'm, the next one will probably be a Cartier for her. So, it's really nice to hear from other married couples that are in the, in the same kind of boat, and I just wish you all the best, my friend. Thank you so much for sending this in. Your donation to charity, absolute gorgeous collection. Yeah, I don't think you really need to buy that many. Just get a diver and you're sorted, my friend. You are sorted. Anyway guys, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very, very much for watching. Don't forget to uh, give us your opinion. What would suit the, you know, the dynamics of this collection? Uh, absolutely, guys, absolutely. I mean, what a collection. What a, it's a collection most of us dream for. Okay guys, so I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. It really does help. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay guys, ciao.